Now continuing on with part three of animator friendly rigging. Again, we're still working on bipedal rigs. So bipedal rigs that have two feet or two pads. So people sh animation rigs could be a monster, could be a, a people, could be a an animal that happens to walk and talk. Doesn't matter. Um, but basically, we're looking at characters that have two arms, two legs, body, and torso like this. Uh, if you remember from part two, we separated the body up into sections with a noise where the head popped off and we got the torso. We worked on both the head and the torso in part two. And then we've also got the arms and the hands and the legs and the feet. So what are we going to work on next? Well, we worked on the torso first because it was the thing that was moving around the most other body parts. The torso moves and that means that the hands are going to move and the arms are going to move and the legs are going to move and the head's going to move. So what about the he or then we moved on to the head because that's the most or the the most next expressive part um, is making sure that the head is doing the right thing. So now we move on to the arms because they are the next most expressive thing. You use the arms for gesturing and all sorts of stuff. But in order to figure out what it is that the arms are going to need to do for the character, it's important for us to look at animation reference and film reference and movie reference and any kind of reference you can get. Um, if you're going to sketch ideas for what the arm should do, you can do that. Uh, if you go out and shoot yourself doing things, you can shoot yourself, you know, running around acting like a crazy person, kind of like we did for the parkour animation um, challenge, <laughs> as I like to call it, where a bunch of us ran around San Francisco. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of movies from that. And please pay no attention to the shiny lycra and headbands. We're doing it for your benefit. So if you take a look in the movies directory that comes with the DVD, you'll notice that there's a directory in there called Arms. So open that up, and then you'll see there's a couple of movies there with arm reference. And this first one here, we have Bryce running forward, and you can see his arm reaching forward, and then, boom, the arms plant on top of this wall here, and push up. He spins around plants the hand again, and then continues another oh, another plant, and then look at this hand right here as it rolls right off. And off he goes. So looking at this movie, you can tell that there's some things that we need to do. First of all, we need to have the arms be able to swing around and move free of anything. They need to be able to plant like so on something and act solid, kind of like almost like a foot. They need to be able to spin around and face any axis, plant again, and they need to be able to roll. Like that. Here's another movie. This one is of me looking like a complete moron, but that's okay. I do this for you. Um, so here again, I'm planting my hands, rolling, and then notice the roll and twist there, another plant. Now the arms are moving freely, and here we go. This movie is of Jason Osipa from Stop Staring Facial Animation Frame. And you can see here, what his arms are doing is they're just swinging very naturally, and then they reach up and grab something and swing naturally. So again, this is another thing that arms need to be able to do, is just swing, reach, grab. A lot of transitioning between um, swinging free and holding on to things. And finally here's Carlos Puertolas pushing like crazy trying to get going on his uh, on his wheelchair. And here you can see how he's reaching and grabbing and reaching and grabbing and reaching and grabbing. And this is the best little bit right here. I love this little part. So he comes forward and then suddenly stops and watch this arm, his screen left arm, goes flying out and great little overlapping action there. It just looks totally fluid. Like that. So we need to be able to do stuff like that as well. So again, switching between the hands being locked onto something and the hands being free. Um, you want the hands to be able to gesture and move around and do all sorts of things. So we can come up with a couple of uh, statements. Basically, we could say that the arms are extremely expressive and they're integral to defining a character's personality. Almost like any part of the body, but the arms vary 
much to find how a character gestures. A lot of times in animation we think about gesturing and, and um, you know, you think of like a typical, stereotypical Italian character where they're always gesturing with their arms and doing things or, um, you know, somebody can be fidgeting with something. If they're nervous, maybe they'll be scratching their face or doing something like that. They really do add a lot to a character's personality. So let's come up with a couple of rules. Here are the requirements that we're going to need. First of all, we need forward kinematic control for general gesturing. Basically, this is allowing characters to walk around and just sort of swing their arms, move them, um, you know, swing when they're walking, move the hands and, and kind of gesture and, and twirl the fingers and twirl the hands and stuff like that. Um, the nice thing about forward kinematics is it allows you to get really nice clean arcs, it's easy to manipulate, it's fast to use, um, and animators understand how to use it. So forward kinematics is definitely an important one. We also need inverse kinematics, which means we want to be able to place the hands on surfaces, like a hand on a table or a hand on the floor if you're running around like a parkour person. So we want to make sure that the hand can be locked in space, and inverse kinematics is the way to do that. We also need to think about situations where a character maybe locks their elbow down on something. For example, if you're holding a glass of wine or something like that and you're resting on the table, you're going to be placing your elbow on the table. If you don't lock that elbow onto the table and then you move the torso, then the elbow is going to move around slide and the animator has to counter animate that, which can be really difficult and really time consuming and very frustrating and enough to make you crazy. So we want to be able to lock the elbow down with both FK and with IK so that if the character is going to be swinging their hand around freely but locking the hand or the elbow on the table we don't want to have to have them animate the hand with IK because that can be more difficult than it needs to be. Um, on the other hand if the character has their head sitting in their hand um, and their elbows locked on the table we don't want to have to have them try and counter animate the FK hand to line up with the head. So we need to have it work with both FK and IK. We also need to have shoulder control because without shoulders you can't do things like shrugging and stuff like that. You've got to be able to move your shoulders. A lot of people when they first start animating in CG don't animate the shoulders correctly and you must. You've got to look at what the, what the shoulders do. They're super expressive so they've got to be used. Got to, got to, got to. Very important. Another thing that we're going to look at is something called isolation of FK arm rotation. We'll get into why that's necessary in a little bit, but I found that um, when animating an FK especially, if you get your FK arm doing something that you like and it's very specific and then all of a sudden you decide you need to tweak the torso and change the tilt of the shoulders, that can change the, the animation of the FK arm and then you've got to modify it and that can be frustrating. So being able to isolate that FK arm rotation is super super important and finally sometimes it's necessary to stretch the arm in order to get the exact pose you want so we have to allow for stretching both in FK and